I don't think that we can prove the existence of God, but I do think that there are reasons to believe. So the question is, what are those reasons, and are they good ones? That's the Reverend Dr. Robert McSwain, Associate Professor of Theology at the University of the South. Dr. McSwain is asking, Could a transformed human life be the best evidence for God? The question of evidence for God is ambiguous and hard to agree on. That's why Dr. McSwain is writing a book that explores an interesting but neglected argument for the divine. There's the cosmological argument that looks at the existence of the entire universe or cosmos. There's the teleological argument that looks at order or apparent design. There's the moral argument, which says we seem to have a sense of moral obligation. And there are also arguments based in human nature. People look at our capacity for reason and even consciousness. What's unusual about what I call the hegeological argument or the argument from human holiness is that it doesn't look at things that are very big or pervasive or abstract, but something very concrete. For example, a person that we might actually know or come in contact with. I first really grasped this through the work of Austin Farr, who says explicitly that the saint is our evidence. The traditional definition of a saint is someone who has already died, and that's not really what I mean. I mean people who are living at a higher level of holiness and love and altruism. So living saints. To me, it's both uh, an exciting discovery on one hand and a mystery on the other. Like, why haven't more people followed up on this. Hugh Lister, who is the man that Austin Farrer thought was a saint as a priest in poor urban neighborhoods. Somebody says that to be with him was to be challenged at the deepest level of thought and action, and all the more sharply because this effect was entirely unconscious. He was just himself, but being himself, he called you in question. But even within this new way of looking at humans as evidence of God, there are nuances. I think there are three versions, what I call the uh, propositional, the perceptual, and the performative. The propositional argument is that there are human lives that are so altruistic, so much lived for others, that the best explanation for these lives is that they somehow speak of God. But other people say, when I'm in this person's presence, I feel God. It's just a direct religious experience. John Meacham says that people who were in John Lewis's life had an ambient sense of, of divine presence. The performative uh, is even more interesting in the sense that it says, no, it's that over the whole course of this person's life, they've somehow lived out the evidence for God. It would be easier for us if we could just say, you know, here's the argument for God's existence, accept it or not. But what Rowan Williams suggests is that God doesn't give us arguments, God gives us lives. That that's how God makes himself real, is through other human lives. And of course, that then presents us the challenge to ourselves become the kind of life that speaks of God to others. So what is it exactly about these unique lives that gets our attention? While they may make us feel uncomfortable, we still feel that somehow in them we're seeing how humans should be. In his forthcoming book, The Saint is Our Evidence, Dr. McSwain digs into this fascinating premise, including questions he has yet to fully resolve, like, how many of these saints are among us? I think it's a really interesting question. It's got to be a significant enough number that most of us have at least had an indirect encounter, but it also has to be small enough for them to be still very rare and precious. 